What's shaking? My name's Cam. Welcome back to another video. I know the title of this video is probably a little bit surprising. You're sitting there, you're thinking to yourself, stuff that Cam won't write about? But he can write anything. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's the best. Uh, in the interest of full transparency, guys, I'm just going to have to unzip here and just put it straight on the table. There are some things that I can't, I won't write about. No matter how much you pay me, unless it's more than $100. Uh, for the most part, the reasons I won't write about these things aren't actually that serious, but uh, I'll explain as I go. Alrighty, today's video is sponsored by no, no one. Uh, it's, it's sponsored by no one. How awkward is it going to be if like five years down the line, I end up writing about one of these things that I'm, I'm gonna say that I'm not gonna write about? I'm not worried, I'm sure one of you would call me out. I, I would hope that you would, uh, you know, take future me down a peg, that pompous bastard. I'm not sure I could see myself ever writing a full-length novel where time travel is what drives the plot. Don't get me wrong, I love time travel in stories. Back to the Future for me is like cinematic perfection. Uh, the book Recursion by Blake Crouch, it's a great book. I like time travel, I just don't think I could do it, you know? The thing is, it's not even just how complicated it would be to like plan a story where time travel is a factor. Don't get me wrong, it is partly that. I know my limits, but mostly it's that I can't imagine any way for me to do a time travel story in a way that is fresh or unique. At least not enough to make it interesting. While I like time travel in stories, I'm also aware of how easily time travel can ruin a story. And I know that there's a lot of other readers in the world who feel the same way. Like they'll be reading a great book and then the protagonist comes to a dead end and then that dead end is inexplicably fixed by time travel, it just kind of ruins it. Yeah, I know, the Avengers did it, but it's Disney. They can stuff a turd with enough cash and make it gold. At most, I think I would probably use time travel in maybe like a short story if I had a really good idea, but otherwise I think I'll steer clear. Now before you go and make a Cam Wolf exposed video, I know that I've technically written erotica before, okay? I know that. I know. But in this context, I mean I'm not going to sit down and write an actual serious novel where the primary purpose is to make people horny. I'm not knocking it, if that's what does it for you. Go for gold. Yes, I have written a bizarro erotica before. Love Comes in Three, the uh, beautiful and groundbreaking story. Some have said it's literary perfection, but anyway, that's not the point. The point is that that is a story I wrote in one day to try and prove that it can't be that hard. Pun very much intended. It was a goof, man. <laughs> it wasn't serious. There was literally a sex scene, a graphic sex scene with Bigfoot's daughter. And anyway, technically, I didn't even write it. It was Wolf A. Stifley, the mysterious and enigmatic uh, author that... <laughs> anyway, moving on. If you want to hear more about Love Comes in 3 for whatever reason, uh, Charmaine Lim actually did a really hilarious, <laughs> truly hilarious, actual critical book review for that for that story. I'll leave a card for her video if you want to check that out. Talking or writing about sex doesn't make me uncomfortable at all, but focusing an entire narrative around characters getting their rocks off, it just isn't really for me, that's all. I wish I enjoyed poetry. I really do. You know, I see people reciting poetry or talking about their favorite poetry and I can appreciate the talent, the passion, and especially the emotion involved. But no matter how hard I try, it just doesn't really do anything for me. That's kind of a blind spot with me. Uh, same goes for abstract art. I, I get the purpose of it, but it also kind of <laughs> goes over my head at the same time. I mean, it's weird, right? Like wanting so badly to enjoy something just so that you can join that world, but feeling uh, nothing. Nothing at all. Okay, so this is the part in the video where we get serious for a minute, guys. I mean that, that's not sarcasm, by the way. I'm sure you've seen conversations, I'm sure you've uh, probably even joined in conversations about authors writing about real world struggles or, or forms of trauma or um, even disabilities or basically just any form of hardship that they personally themselves haven't experienced. And despite what some people on either side of that conversation will say, I just don't think there's a simple yes you can or no you can't to this one. It's extremely complicated. Obviously I could talk about this for an hour and obviously I'm probably not the best person to be talking about this, but 
I'm going to and I'm going to make it brief. Personally, I like to believe that nothing is off limits when it comes to art, and that includes writing. The best art through history was created by people pushing societal boundaries. And it just feels weird to me, it just doesn't feel right to be telling artists that they can and can't include uh, specific things in their art. It just feels kind of counterintuitive to the point of art, you know what I mean? With that said, I also don't think it's entirely appropriate for people to write stories where the entire uh, plot is built on a very real world struggle that they've never experienced. And I mean that very specifically. Uh, for example, like if a middle class dude who grew up in the suburbs in a wealthy family into wealth, if he went and wrote an entire book series about what it's like to be a Syrian refugee, something about that just doesn't sit right with me. You know what I mean? And I think that's mainly because there are people out there who are already telling those stories. People who can actually pull from their own experience. Now with that said, here's the caveat for me personally. I don't think any writer should be disqualified from including characters who have had those experiences. For example, there's this book called What Milo Saw and there is a side character who happens to be a Syrian refugee. The book isn't about being a Syrian refugee, but there is a character there and he does have a backstory. In my opinion, I think it was done very respectfully. It's impractical to believe that any artist, uh, especially writers, can only write about things that they themselves have personally experienced. We just have to accept that, especially when it comes to fiction. However, like I said, uh, when it comes to real world struggles, when there are people who are already telling those stories, I think it's best just to leave them to it. Because there's just way too much risk of you doing a disservice to something that a lot of people are really dealing with. While we as writers shouldn't be telling other people's very personal stories, I also don't think we should be pretending that those people don't exist and just not including them in our books whatsoever. I think that would be kind of ridiculous. Anyway, that's how I feel about all that. Let me know what you think. I actually had plans to write a story that was like set in a virtual reality world, but I basically scrapped it for bits. Kind of like an old car, you know when you tear an old car apart and you just use the bits for different vehicles? Basically like that. I took most of the story ideas and the characters and I'm actually likely going to be putting them into the fantasy series that I'm planning. The problem is that I just can't think of any way to do a VR story in a creative or unique way. And the biggest struggle with writing a VR story is making the stakes feel real. It's hard to create a sense of danger for someone in a virtual reality game when they can quite simply just take off the headset and stop playing. You could say like, oh, it'll kill them if they leave the game or someone will die or something like that, but it's already been done like a billion times. I'm, I'm just not gonna do it. My old uh, fantasy series had the old trope of the, <laughs> the protagonist finding out that they are secret royalty. It's not even really a bad trope, if you ask me. I actually think it's a very cool concept, uh, finding out that someone who thinks they're very ordinary, uh, less than ordinary even, them finding out that they're destined for something uh, great or something special. It's, it's like wish fulfillment for basically anyone who reads fantasy. But the problem is that the 2010s kind of saturated the entire YA market with so many of these secret air stories that even just talking about this trope now, like, bores me to tears. I have an enormous amount of respect for people who write non-fiction, but me personally, I just can't wrap my head around it. I just can't. To be fair, I've never really looked that much into it or into how to do it, but even imagining sitting down at a computer to write something that is factually real and knowing that I have to be very accurate in what I'm doing, that's just a bit daunting, to be honest. I'm not a scientist or a mathematician. Shocking, I know. So yeah, obviously I won't be writing a book on the secrets of the cosmos or ancient history. But even the thought of writing like a biography or something that legitimate intellectuals may pick up, ah, it just doesn't, just doesn't sit right with me. I think mostly because I wouldn't know how to even approach it, how to begin. Nonfiction just feels like a completely different universe to me. It almost feels like a completely different uh, practice or hobby. I very rarely write anything other than than a uh, fictional third person past tense, and that's not really something you can get away with in nonfiction. 
On that topic, uh, slow-paced historical fiction. I'll be honest, I just I, I just have bugger all interest in ever writing that. Yes, The Three Musketeers is one of my favourite books of like of all time, but let's be real, that, that book has more action than a Michael Bay film. The thought of writing about uh, high society debutantes trading gossip on the love scandals of wealthy, beak-nosed men makes me want to put my head in a box and drop it in the ocean. <laughs> I hope that's not too mean. If you like that stuff, that's fine. I know Downton Abbey has like a cult following, so obviously there is something there that is drawing people in. It's just not for me. Fun fact, uh, long before I ever finished my first ever book, I actually wanted to be a screenwriter. I wanted to write scripts for movies, specifically like art house horror films. I even did a whole ass diploma course in film and television where I had to learn about all the ins and outs of like the film industry and script writing and the worst part was learning about all of the costs involved. It's just, it's more insane than you would think. There's no deep reason I moved away from writing scripts. God knows that I would still love to write a story that would end up on the screen, but it's more so just that writing in the script format uh, didn't really suit me very well. Quite simply, writing in a script format is just a huge weak point for me, so I just decided to leave it to the professionals. So there you have it. 10 things that, for now, I refuse to write about. Like I said, if I change my mind in the future, <laughs> feel free to expose me. Make me look like a little bitch, I don't care. Now I want to know what you refuse to write about. Let me know below. Thanks so much for watching, especially if you watched to the end of the video. I really, really appreciate you guys. It means a lot to me. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video. Catch ya.